Okay, throw it. Uh, yeah, <laughs> you made it into a cup. <laughs> okay, so this is a virtual root beer pong. Yeah, is that what I hear? Yeah, okay. Yes, yeah. Tell me about it. Um, so up here in the robotic arm, we have uh, sort of like a three degree of freedom uh, servo control arm. Um, and so we're using two different big 32s. W one is solely for the, the control of this. Uh, and then the other one, uh, we have it here on the sleeve. Uh, and it, it gathers data from two IMUs. Uh, and this pressure sensor over here. So you have an IMU for the elbow. Mm -hmm. And you have an IMU for the wrist. And then you have a pressure sensor, which you're using as a release. It's a release mechanism. So the yeah. further you cock your arm back and then press, the further the thing goes. Yeah. All right, so, so now... That would be, like, the furthest, I think. Uh-huh. Yeah. Neat. All right, so move your arm around now so I can see, watch the robot move at the same time. And so uh, over what period of time do you have reliable tracking uh depends on the motion you make with the uh yeah, with so the elbow but if you keep a small movement about 10 20 seconds of enough enough time to play game uh you should move like wide range then it may get a little less but it's still pretty good it's after all that motion it looks like it's maybe processed 30 degrees around the horizontal axis there and that's pretty yeah. good mm -hmm. and you're using a a complementary filter on the on the IMU. Yeah, so all the calculations are actually done on this pick 32, and all this doing all this one is doing getting those um, the angle data to tr uh, convert into pulse width mo a pulse width for the servo motors. Right. And to calculate this angle uh, of elbow and the wrist, we use 98% gyro and 2% accelerometer. So what that does is. The 98% gyro is able to quickly capture the motion and of the angle, and because there is some integration error, the accelerometer 2% takes account of you know kind of like bringing you back to the actual angle. Once you stop, and then Once it then it then it does the static correction. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So another thing that we have going in here is um, we. We initially tried to uh, have RF communication between the two boards, uh, and although it was working uh, for a bit, uh, after uh, after maybe like 20, 30 seconds, it would become a little unreliable. So, uh, in order to have this continuous this continuous motion that you can see in here that just keeps going, uh, we just connected them to you are directly. So right now they're talking to each other via UART. Okay, so so in the fullness of time, if you had infinite time, you'd make it wireless because it's almost there. Yeah, if we had mm -hmm. maybe just this one day to debug and then with tomorrow, probably. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So there's also like some delay with the RF packetization and packeting oh, time. So you're quite right. In fact, with the XBs, there's quite a lot of packeting time, maybe a quarter of a second. Yeah, it was actually like 30 milliseconds when I saw it from the micro. Uh -huh. yeah, that's, about that's enough that it bothers you. Yeah, so it, it slows down the reaction time of the robotic arm, but now it's very, like, it's, it seems pretty real time now. Oh, I, I, I agree. That's, that's very impressive. And it has kind of a real, oddly realistic look to it, too. <laughs> yeah, when, when, you, when, you, when you pump your arm, it kind of has a... Okay. It's a prison break. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thanks. I can also feed someone if I go like... Do you have a last throw? <laughs> okay, one last throw. Go back a little more. <laughs> oh, oh okay, miss. Another one. Another one. Another one. Another one. Okay. <laughs> go back, go back. All right, well, well, you got your first two, at least. <laughs> yeah. Okay, thank you.